Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. I'm pretty sure I redid everything that yes. we did in the last episode. Pretty sure we got everything redone. I redid everything that I remembered doing, at the very least. Alright, well... Get that off. Do that. And... Yeah, you just go attack it. Hi? Okay, the fire worked shockingly well. That was much easier than last time. What's in there? Another trap. But I got rid of the trap. Because I'm a champion. Alright, okay. Got it. So. This room down here, maybe. That seems like where we turned the water on at. Let's go check whatever that out is. You know the words I meant to say. Maybe. Yeah, there's ooze. That's it. My party has not been doing a good job at staying fighting. Get some. Sure. What's this? A key! Alright. What to, though? Oh, this ghost was saying something. I didn't like that. Hey buddy, can we not die? That thing you just did, I wanted you to not do that, Let's believe go. it or not. Damn, miss. I need to move, because right now I'm making it so that everybody's having Let's a bad go. time. Come on. Get scared. There we go. Get up. There's so much stuff in this room. Alright, okay, where else is left? Just the spooky room? Just the spooky room, it looks like. Okay, spooky room it is. But I'm not happy about it. And I probably should have healed in retrospect. But I only have so many camps, so I also didn't want to. We did it!
The still dark waters are as reflective as black glass. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool, but also a little bit ominous. Alright, so we got two different ways to go. We got this way, which looks ominous and spooky, and we got this way that has a lever and looks ominous and spooky. There's a screech of metal and a snapping noise as you pull the lever. What's that? Oh my. Alright. The light rises from the bones as you approach. You have a moment to register the faintest image of a standing figure. Features a blur of mist or smoke before the world tilts. It's as if you've stepped sideways and into a new life. You are racing down a flight of stairs, following a weaving circle of torchlight. Your own panting breaths are loud in your ears. Panic and your robes alike foul your steps, and you nearly stumble before a hand reaches out to grip your arm and steady you. A fellow acolyte, who smiles encouragement as you reach the bottom. You run around and pass the shallow reflection pool that marks the lowest point of the temple, following the dark shapes of the older priests as they lead the way towards a narrow hall that leads to the vault. You pass one of the torchbearers as you go. The harsh illumination of the flame reveals a familiar face. For a moment, your awareness spans time and identity, and you think Wirtan has joined you here at the bottom of the temple. In the memory, he glances at you for a moment, then looks past at someone else. I'll come back once they're gone, he's saying. You're being pressed along by the crowd, and his words are growing faint. Just keep quiet. We can't take any chances. Inside the vault, golden relics gleam like welcoming stars. The memory twists, jarring you loose from one moment and plunging you into another like a flung doll. There's only darkness around you now. You think yourself blinded until the knowledge settles on you like a cloak. The candles have all burnt away. You know now, too, with a sick, cer sick certainty that nobody is coming. There is a cracking noise somewhere to your left, a wet slurping gurgle and a ragged sob. You cannot see, so you cannot know which brother or sister has fallen, and which digs after what water a body may provide. You hear, in the faint murmuring to your right, the familiar cadence of prayer, but you no longer recognize the words. You are too tired to do harm. The thirst is like fire within you. Your tongue is thick in your throat, and every breath is a struggle that leeches strength from you. There is a light, they said, at the end of every bout of darkness, but this one does not end. The spirit releases you, and you come back to yourself, in pieces. Your vision clears, and the vault around you is revealed once more, cast in muted hues by the sickly illumination of the soul still drifting like fading fog. Fear wafts off the spirit in waves, fraying at your own emotions. I'm sorry. I hope you find some peace in the next life. The spirit seems to withdraw into itself. You sense less of its fear and confusion as it recedes, but the soul still lingers. Gather the remains. You spend a few moments gathering up what you can find of the bones of the priests. It proves a heavy and gruesome burden, but you manage to recover them all. Some of the gold leaf on these relics is chipped away to reveal the wood beneath. There are tooth marks upon one of the bowls. There are faint scratches upon the brickwork of the door hinges. This stand rocks unsteadily on its base. It seems the mechanism has broken. Well, that was unfortunate. This won't stop me for long. There, done. Ooh, an even better thingy. Who uses a one-handed weapon? You do. This is cr Crush Slash. This is also Crush, though. Alright, that's Pierce. This is Slash Pierce. A dart trap? When did I get a dart trap? Oh, that's the thing I disassembled! I got it now. Okay. So then what's up over here? The one way I didn't go yet. Oh, more scalds. How may I help? Let's go.
No problem. Ooh, a hat. I could wear a hat. I look silly, but I've got a hat. Where does this go? Where did I go? I didn't fully process what I was doing till after I'd clicked it. Oh, it's the other it's the other staircase. Oh no, it's not. Where am I? As you step over the circle of candles, you hear a rattling clunk from the wall nearby. A door slides open with a gra grinding rasp of stone. The candles flicker gently as you approach. There is a gap above the altar, lined with broken glass, where a mirror may once have been set into the wall. The altar itself seems untouched. Layers of dust have fallen upon the stone and dried wax. Dried wax. Well, snuff a candle. You reach out and pinch one of the burning wicks. Smoke rises in a thin trail from the candle. Nothing else appears to happen. Okay. Well, I didn't know what to do there, so that's what I did. Alright, so where's that guy? Over here. Come over here, gang. You gotta tell that guy off for... Crimes, maybe. God's key. Weirton smiles nervously as you approach. Think I've sorted out the worst of it. Arms hurting a little less. He hesitates. You were down there a while. Did you find anything? His eyes dart constantly around the ruins. Something you're nervous about? Uh, no, of course not. Just never good to linger around these places, that's all. Weirton gives you a searching look. Did you find anything? You'll have to separate them out yourself. It's a bit of a mess. The color drains from Weirton's face. He takes the bundle from you with trembling hands. You found them, then? He stares down at the bones. You've lost an item. Dead priest bones. I found more than bones, actually. S something valuable, you mean? You can keep whatever you found. I don't... I don't want any of it. Nobody's been down below since... Radrick's people have no interest in Aethesian goods, is my point. They won't miss whatever you take. Um... You're very nervous for an honest man. Something weighing on your conscience, maybe? Weirton opens his mouth to protest, but something in your expression stops him. He swallows, nervously, and looks away. His voice, when he speaks, is small. H how did you... That place is full of shadows. Spirits of those you killed. That's not... He eyes you fearfully. I didn't kill them. Right up until the end, I... You don't understand. I tried to help them. I did. Every day. Every single day. I went to that temple and I warned them. I told them that they were playing with fire and Radric Roderick wouldn't be patient forever. And every time they'd shrug it off. Like I didn't know what I was talking about. Like it wasn't costing me coming in to try and help them. I could have been arrested right alongside them. So what happened? Radrick sent word that he was going to have them arrested. Drag them out, lock them up. They wouldn't listen. The Rectrix said they'd be reborn if anything should happen, and she wasn't afraid. I convinced them to hide, at least. They have that vault full of old relics, gold and such. I thought, I thought they could hide in there. And once the guards left, they'd leave, they'd have something to sell for passage out of the deerwood, back to a deer. But when I told the men the priests had already gone, they ordered the temple sealed. I couldn't get in again. Weatan shakes his head. There was nothing I could do. So, then why did you send me down there? Because if Lord Radrick means to have the temple cleared... They would have found the bones eventually. They'd know I'd lied to them when I said the priest left, and I'd hang. Weirton's shoulders sag. 
I don't know if Radric would have killed them. Maybe they'd be languishing in cells now. Maybe they'd be off somewhere in the Empire, and I'd have a night's peace. I told you the way of it, Weirton sa says, his voice rough. I told you what happened. Guess it's your turn now to make a decision. <sighs> It's not too late to make amends. Weirton lets out the breath he was holding. I'm not sure that's true. It's been years now. What am I supposed to do? Bury their bones. Try to lead a better life than you have so far. Weirton looks at the remains. He runs a hand through his hair, letting out another ragged breath. <sighs> I can do that. I can. I'll lay them to rest. Try and and do right by them, somehow. Thank you, truly, for what you've done, giving me a second chance. I'll put to it to good use. Okay, bye! This episode's a little bit long, but the last couple have been a little bit short, so I don't care. I want to make actual progress on the plot, since I got very sidetracked by the everything in the temple that went way longer than I expected it to. Was this guy by the tree who I was supposed to talk to? Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. Looking for anyone who can help me feel better. He gives an understanding nod as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Okay, not this guy. Oh, duh. The, the glowing lady. That makes some sense. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bough that sags the tug at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a temp tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Alright. We're touching. This isn't the first time we've touched purple, so let's touch purple. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you've expended enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing, electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that it stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the ropes creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? I think I survived a Beowick. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. So souls break apart over time? 
Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die, and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence, and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. She clicks her tongue. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Okay. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra Stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! What do you mean, when all goes well? That sounds vaguely ominous. Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Kaldara closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. I got the Crucible of Souls. I have no idea what that means. Is it a thing yeah. like this? It's a thing like this. Cool. Uh, this episode did end up going longer than I meant it to, though. So, for now, bye-bye. I love you. I hope you've enjoyed. Yeah, bye-bye.